Hello, dear students. Здравствуйте, студенты. My name is Veronica. Меня зовут Veronica. And today, during this Russian lesson, we will talk about Russian cases. Most probably you already know that in Russian language we have six cases. And today we will talk about the fourth case, accusative case, vinitelny padesh, how we call it in Russian language. So, first I would like to show where do we use accusative case. First, if we have object, it is written here, object, direct object. For example, я люблю Москву. Я, subject, люблю, verb, Москву, object. Yeah? So, with the word люблю, you use after it accusative case. And later I will show you what we do with the word to make accusative case. Now we just talk about the situation where we need to use it, okay? Or, for example, ты изучаешь русский язык. Русский язык, accusative case, because it is object what you study, yeah? Профессор читает книгу. Книгу, object, it is what you read. So, not very difficult. In Russian language, if you have object, direct, object, it is an accusative case. First situation. And now we move to next one. Here I choose some most common Russian verbs that we use with accusative case. So let's let me read. Um, Любить, to love. Ненавидеть. I will be reading two times. First time slowly, second time fast and without English translation. You have it on the screen and you just follow me, okay? I start from here. Любить. Любить. Ненавидеть. Ненавидеть. Обожать. Обожать. Читать. Читать. Изучать. Изучать. Делать. Делать. Слушать. Слушать. Слышать. Слышать. After all these verbs, you must use accusative case because it is object. Смотреть. Смотреть. Видеть. Видеть. Помнить. Помнить. Понимать. Понимать. Ждать. Ждать. Here I put this <laughs> funny little star because after that sometimes you can use genitive, sometimes accusative, but most probably you must use accusative. Okay? Uh, давать. Давать. Покупать. Покупать. Брать. Брать. To take. After all these verbs, you use accusative, okay? Of course, it is not the finished list. We have so many different verbs um, after what we need to use accusative, but this is enough for beginner um, student, in my opinion. So, the second situation when we can use accusative is movement from one place to another. So, куда means where, where are you going, yeah? 
Дети идут в школу. Дети идут в школу. Школу accusative because it is a place where you are going or the kids are going. Yeah? Девушка пойдет в театр на оперу. Девушка пойдет в театр на оперу. It means she was at home and she will go or she goes to the theater to, for the opera. So, театр – it's a place where she is going. Opera – it's event where she is going. So, there are two accusative cases. В театр – place на оперу – event. Yeah? And the, the third situation where we must use accusative case again is time. Days of the week. В субботу мы идем в парк. В субботу мы идем в парк. Here again you have double accusative. В субботу on Saturday. Yeah, it's first accusative. В парк. It's place where you are going. So it's also accusative case. Be careful because time is a tricky grammatical theme in Russia, in Russian language, because if you talk about weeks and months, you must use prepositional case. If you talk about parts of the day, like in the morning, in the day, in the night, or tonight, you must use instrumental case. If you talk about seasons, like in summer, in winter or like that, you must use again instrumental case. But if you talk about days, yeah, Monday, Tuesday and so on, you must use accusative with preposition V, like here in the example. В субботу мы идем в парк. В субботу, в понедельник, on Monday, yeah. And the future. You use через, in English it is in, for example, in a minute, in an, in an hour, in a day, yeah? Через час начнется урок. Через час начнется урок. In these three situations, like time, movement and direct object, you must use accusative, right? So now we understood where we should use this tricky case and now we move on uh, to the examples. I choose some. We start from easy, step by step. Shag za shagam, as I always say, right? Masculine, I choose masculine, nominative, not alive. So это журнал, it's a magazine. Это музей, it's a museum. But if you want to say accusative, be very careful with masculine. You need to definitely know if it is alive or not alive. So if it is not alive, you don't change the ending at all. Like, я читаю журнал in accusative and in nominative the same. Я иду в музей. Again, the same situation. The same in accusative, the same in nominative, right? Just remember it, okay? But if it is alive, if we talk about people, yeah, it's different situation. I choose masculine nominative alive. Это Роберт, это Андрей, это Игорь. It's very important because Роберт, т, in the end, it is hard consonant. And Андрей, Игорь, 
they have soft letters, soft sounds in the end of the word. So, if you want to say accusative, alive, masculine, if you have hard consonant, you just add a. Anna lubit Roberta. It doesn't mean that Robert turns from a man to a woman, Robert, Roberta. No, not at all. <laughs> Don't be offended. I mean, a lot of foreigners, they think that Robert and then Roberta, he became a woman. No, not at all. It's just Russian accusative case. Anna lubit Roberta. We show that it is object. That's it. Or it was hard, but if we have soft, like y or soft sign, we need to replace these letters with ya. For example, ya vi ju andre ya. Ya vi ju andre ya. On pani ma yet igaria. On pani ma yet igaria. So you see this difference, yeah? Robert becomes Roberta because it is object of her love. She loves Robert. Andrey becomes Andrey ya because it is object what I see. Это Игорь. Игорь becomes Игоря because it is object what he understands, right? <laughs> that's tricky. I know that's tricky for um, non-Slavic speakers, but it's just a habit and you just need to get used to this, okay? Um, and let's talk about feminine. I choose again the same structure. First, we talk about feminine nominative. Eta kniga, eta alla, Maria i Nicole. Here doesn't matter if it is alive or not alive. The rule is the same. So if you have a in the end of the word, you need to replace it with u. If you have ya, soft variant, soft uh, type, yeah, you need to replace it with u. Soft sign doesn't change. If it is, um, especially if it is foreign name, like Nicole, Adele, yeah, something like that. So, on chitayet kni. Wu. First in nominative it was kni ga and now it became kni gu. We just replaced a with u. John lubit alu. The same situation it was a la became a lu because this object, right? James nina vidit ma ri yu. Mari ya. In accusative, ma ri you. And ani slusha yut ni kol. Woman, a foreign woman with a name that finishes with a soft sign are lucky in Russian language, so we do not change your name. Nicole, Adele, Amal, yeah, all the same. Uh, they stand like a nominative. Okay, so now we know about masculine and feminine, but what about um, neutral and plural? So in neuter, we don't change anything. Это окно, if you say it is a window, это окно, я вижу окно, the same, we don't change. Or это яблоко. Yeah. Я ем яблоко. I eat an apple. 
So again, you don't change anything. And about plural, hmm, you know, it's not very easy. I didn't make even a table for this because it's huge material. So you need to know again if it is alive or not alive. If it is not alive, you don't change anything. Like, for example, это mm, книги. These are books. Here are books. Да, это книги. Я читаю книги. I read books again. Um, you don't need to change anything. But if the object is alive, you have a little problem or let's say struggle in Russian language because we need to change it the same as genitive, plural. The form is the same as genitive plural, but um, we have so many different types and different rules and different exceptions for this. So if you want, I can do a video about this theme, <laughs> but uh, I am afraid you will lose your enthusiasm because if you think that this was difficult, you will be totally lost if I will talk about um, accusative plural alive. So I hope that you are not very upset upset uh, about what I was talking today. So <laughs> yes, you should know that Russian language is very difficult, but you just need to practice, to listen, to talk. And the important thing, you please don't be afraid to make a mistake. Even if you make a mistake, it's better than you keep silent and don't say anything. Just try, just say something and make mistakes and teacher or people, Russian speakers, they will correct you. So it's part of learning. There is no other way. You just say and you make a mistake, you are corrected and then you remember, oh, okay, I made the mistake. And next time will be better, definitely. So I hope that you liked my mini Russian lesson. And now I hope that you don't think that Russian language is too difficult and to learn Russian is impossible. No, it is not. You just need to understand our Russian logic and that's it. Okay, so see you soon. Uvidimse skora. And if you have any idea for my future mm, videos, please text me below in the comments. I am waiting for all your Reaction? Can I say reaction? I think yes. Reaktia. <laughs> we say in Russia. I'm waiting for your opinions and what you need. And пока-пока. Bye-bye.